everyone, Adrienne here. So yes, I am back from LA. Super exciting. I can't believe it finally happened. Like all this build up and everything of everything that the composer and I have been working on. So yes, it has been recorded. Everything on my end is done. I just need the composer to finish doing his thing on his end with mi mixing and mastering. And then another musical group is actually going to do a remix of it once the mixing and mastering is done. So I'm super excited about it. It's going to be a really cool, fun uh, dance remix. I'm still not going to reveal the title quite yet. I will make a video in due time to announce the upcoming release of my first original song. I'm so excited. So yes, LA happened and now I'm back. So I'm going to be returning to my YouTube videos with a new absinthe review. So the new one I'm going to be reviewing today is Purple Haze. So this is another one from the Star Whiskey Distillery and I'm really, really excited about it. Again, this was a sample, like one of many samples that I was sent by the owner and I'm really, really excited to try it. This is a rouge absinthe, which means it is red. So I know it may seem like red absence or rouge absence or Jose absence might have been a new thing within the last couple of years, but actually they were a thing in the pre-ban era. So that's kind of fun and exciting. So in the pre-ban era, there were a couple that were colored red with uh, hibiscus or sometimes even rose petals during the second maceration process, which is the process where absinthe would get the normal traditional green color, but in this case, uh, they are getting a really beautiful kind of uh, red color. So that's kind of cool. All right, so now we're going to read a little bit about Purple Haze. So Absinthe Purple Haze is a red absinthe from the German Saar Whiskey Distillery. It is composed of traditional herbs used to make absinthe. After distillation, a further maceration is done to give this absinthe its natural red color. The distillers use hibiscus flowers for that, but the special thing about Purple Haze is its louche. When water is added, the absinthe clouds into a very beautiful milky purple color. It is simply magical. The taste of Purple Haze is slightly sweet with floral notes of hibiscus. So that is super interesting. I really do like absinths that have kind of a floral um, flavor profile. So this will be really, really cool. And I'm also excited to try this one because I technically haven't had any rouge absinths yet that are naturally colored because the last red one that I reviewed in the recent past was artificially colored, kind of a big letdown, but that's okay. I am excited to try this one. I'm excited to see how different it is from the other absinths that I have tried in the past. And today my accoutrements are, are gonna be my uh, bruyere and the uh, kind of coupe absinthe glass. So this is what I'm gonna be using today because I just can't be bothered with dicking around with my fountain today. So that's just, that's just it. All right, so now I'm going to reposition the camera and we are going to get to evaluating Purple Haze Absinthe. All right, guys, so now we are getting into the analysis part of my review of Purple Haze. So as you can see here from the bottle, it is still sealed, so I haven't dipped into it or taken any sneaky tastes. So here we go, just gonna break the seal here. Ooh, that's interesting, okay. So just gonna do our pour. Okay, so I'm thinking that the color may have faded from its original red to this amber color, but even still, um, the amber color is really, really pretty. It's crystal clear. I don't see any trace evidence of like sediment or anything like that. So I'm pretty excited to try this one. So uh, for appearance, I am going to give it four stars. Okay, we're going to get started with the process of the louche and see how it looks. I'm gonna withhold my judgment until I see uh, what happens with the louche here. So hopefully it still turns out to be the pretty purple color that it is meant to be. So let's do this. Okay, it's clouding up right away. That's promising. Really nice. 
I would say this is definitely a better louche than um, the Cthulhu Velt that I tried from the same distillery. So that's also very promising. So I am noticing a little bit of a pink tinge that is forming. So that's cool. It might still be holding on to a little bit of the uh, purple color that comes through when the louche begins. So while it looks like the purple color that was intended to come through has faded, and again that is partially my fault because it did take me a while to go through these absents that I was sent by the Sar Whiskey Distillery, the louche is still very impressive. So without being gimmicky at this point, it is still impressive. I really wish that I could have had a chance to see it in its full glory and to see the purple color coming through, but that's okay. I am seeing like tiny itty bitty little hints of pink coming through, but definitely not the purple that um, I was expecting. But again, that's totally my fault. So I'm still going to give a really good score for the louche because of how impenetrable it is even with the bright lights in this room. So trust me, the, the degradation of the color is not going to take any points away as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so there is the Louche for Purple Haze. It is thick, it is impenetrable, it still retains some bit of complexity, even though the purple tint that was supposed to be there has degraded, so I will give it points for that. Now, as far as the original color is concerned, again, like I said in my review of Lord of the Frogs uh, to this distiller, I there is absolutely no shame in using a color preservative, especially if you're going to uh, kind of put the color of this absinthe on full display. So that's just my um, two cents there as far as that's concerned. So the purple haze absinthe for the louche, I'm going to go ahead and give it like four stars uh, because even though it may not have delivered the purple hue that I was expecting, it's still a very good louche. I would say that this is even a better louche than what I got from uh, Cthulhu Velt, and maybe even a little bit of a better louche uh, than Lord of the Frogs. So I'm going to reposition the camera one more time and we are going to evaluate the aroma, the flavor, and the mouthfeel and give our final thoughts. Alright, so here we have our glass of purple haze. Again, I'm just slightly disappointed that the purple color isn't really there anymore, but again, that's my fault. Don't come at me. <laughs> Or actually, please do come at me. Don't come at the distillery for this. So yeah, I'm really excited to see how this goes. Oh, I forgot to write down the louche score for this. <laughs> Whoopsie. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out the aroma and see how it is. Hmm. It has an interesting kind of spicy flavor or note to it that I really like. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Lord of the Frogs in structure, like for the aroma. So it has a, a spiciness. I am getting a little bit of the fennel and wormwood in there. Not so much the anise, but that could come through in the flavor profile when I actually taste it, which would be lovely. And I'm definitely getting that really soft, subtle, like floral note 
um, on the tail end of the aroma. Hmm, that's really nice. That's really pleasant and agreeable, and I think it's awesome. So uh, for aroma for Purple Haze, I am going to give that four stars because I really, really like what it has going for it so far. So that's really nice. All right, so now we're going to evaluate the flavor and as always, santé and please drink responsibly. Ooh. Oh, wow. That floral finish is really coming through, but I'll get to that. Wow. That is just so refreshing. It's like, it's a little bit like eating Turkish delight, not gonna lie. <laughs> Wow, that is really different and impressive. So I will say that the Holy Trinity does come through just a little bit more. I'm getting a little bit more of the anise and the fennel bits of the absinthe, which is really nice. That's what you want. You want to taste the Holy Trinity. And it is really nice and naturally sweet. I think Kenny honestly would like this one without sugar but um, I'll have him try it later and see how he feels about it. And then it finishes like really nice and floral. Like, like I said, it just reminds me of taking a big bite into Turkish delight, but without all of the powdered sugar. So well done. This is like the Turkish delight of absinthe. And I'm not exaggerating. That is really saying something. I am a really big fan of floral flavors. Kenny and I love lavender. We love flowers just in general. Like we, we like really floral scents whenever we are uh, picking out room spray for our home. So this is really, wow. That is impressive. That is seriously impressive. For this one, I kind of want to give it four and a half stars for being not only well balanced on the Holy Trinity, but also giving that unique floral finish. That's really good. <laughs> All right, let's take another sip and see about the mouthfeel, shall we? <laughs> Ooh, that's really good. So for the mouthfeel, it's definitely, it's a little thinner than I would like. That being said, I feel like the complex and multifaceted flavors that come through with this absinthe kind of make up for the lack of body and presence of the mouthfeel, so to speak. But that's just me. I really like the mouthfeel. I think it like the, the finish of it has a really nice like floral finish. Again, like I just swallowed a piece of Turkish delight, which is great. So it's really floral and really smooth and silky, but it's, it does, doesn't quite ha have as much like of the velvety kind of mouthfeel that I get with some of the higher end absinths that I've had in the past. But th does that mean that the mouth feels bad? Absolutely not. I feel like this is wonderful. This is actually a really pleasant surprise. This is probably my favorite so far of the Sar Whiskey distilleries that I have tried. And it's because it offers like this really interesting multi-dimensional floral flavor that I really, really enjoy. So for the mouthfeel on this one, I if it didn't have anything unique to offer on top of the already pretty good mouthfeel, I would give it three and a half stars, but because it has such a nice lingering floral flavor, I definitely want to give it four stars for that. So that's, that's great. So am I disappointed that it may not have as much of the purple hint that I was hoping for? Just a little bit, but honestly, I'm really happy with the product otherwise. Kudos to the distiller for coming out with a rouge absinthe that is naturally colored. Obviously, if it weren't naturally colored, then it wouldn't have faded to an amber color. So obviously it's natural. So I'm really happy with this. I would really like to try it again and see about the original color that it's supposed to be. Oh, let me see about the alcohol content for this. I'm sorry. So this is a 68.8% um, alcohol by volume. So it's a little bit on the higher end of the spectrum for alcohol content for absinthe but it goes down really smoothly. Like from tasting it, you would not know that the um, alcohol content was that high. I'm really excited to see what it's like with sugar. I am gonna do a TikTok review of this later. I really like what's happening with it. This is really lovely. And 
Would I recommend this for a beginner? If you have a beginner who really likes floral flavors, then sure. But I think that this might be a little bit better suited for someone who's a little bit more seasoned in the world of absinthe. And it, it's really, really good. I'm actually really impressed by this. Like guys, seriously, it's, it's great. <laughs> if you want a good springtime or summertime absinthe, this is probably gonna be your go-to. I can see this being a really good addition in like a, a corpse reviver or maybe even a necromancer. Uh, because the floral finish on this with the hibiscus might be a really nice complement to the elderflower liqueur in a necromancer. I can see that working really, really well and playing off of each other really well. Or like with a lavender flavored like simple syrup, I can see that working too. So yeah, this absinthe kind of uh, <laughs> took me by surprise. I am really impressed by it. If you are interested in checking out this absinthe, then I will leave a link down below for you guys to check it out in the description. And I will also leave a link for the distillery's website as well. Also, one more thing before I go, I just wanted to show you guys, I got vaccinated today. Yes, I'm a healthcare worker. It is required for me to be up to date on vaccines. On this side, I got my COVID booster, my next COVID booster. And then on this side, I got out. <laughs> I got my uh, flu shot, so please try to get up to date on your vaccinations. And when the COVID vaccines do become available to you, please go get them. Don't wait. Try to get it done as quickly as you can. There's my TED talk for the day. All right, guys. So that is that for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment down below telling me um, if you have tried any of the Star Whiskey absence and if you have any intention of trying this purple haze absinthe. And if you have had it, I am curious to know if you get a little bit more of the purple hint than I did, or if maybe you got a fresher batch than I did. <laughs> maybe I'll buy a full bottle of it sometime down the road. Who knows? Um, I'm going to have Kenny try it later on this evening. So thank you so much for watching. And I really, really, really appreciate your support. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos on absinthe, the goth subculture, goth music, and gothic literature, and other fun things that I have coming up in the future, including my first original song. <coughs> so exciting. And thank you so much to all of my patrons, especially the new ones that recently joined. Like I said, guys, if you are interested in becoming a patron, I have updated some of the perks to becoming a patron on my Patreon, and that does include getting a physical copy of my first original song when it comes out. So the link to, the, to my uh, Patreon is going to be in the description below. And to everyone, you're amazing. I love you, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.